All right, so today we will briefly go to um, explaining uh, a bit, well, walking uh, everyone through the landscape around DMPs in Europe, uh, based on some uh, reports that have been published. And, and the reports have assessed uh, the, the results, let's say, and in particular, the open science application to these results and to the dissemination of activities in Horizon 2020 projects. So uh, it will be good to see uh, moving forward to the Horizon Europe, which is the, the main topic of today's uh, call, as we will be seeing the template for Horizon Europe matters. Uh, moving forward, it would be good to know what's uh, needed and how Argos addresses it. And yes, as I said, uh, we would like to have a discussion. So I will move to the Menti. If you could please go to menti.com, uh, click the code, enter the code 85892494. I will switch now to the Menti. Hopefully you can see it and you are already logged in. So first question is, what part of the world are you connected from? Uh, I am currently in Greece. I'm based in Greece, but I'm also currently in Greece. So not somewhere else traveling. There are several meetings around open science that are happening this summer. Um, so maybe this uh, community call finds you somewhere else than your base. The Netherlands, Finland, Germany, France. Wow, <laughs> it's, it's moving so quick. Austria, uh, Estonia. It's a different around Europe, all the regions uh, around Europe. Italy, Albania, Switzerland, Finland, Spain, Lithuania, Portugal. Wow, really good. Mexico, Brazil. Hi, everyone. Oh, wow. What time is it now, actually, in Mexico and Brazil? Um, awesome. Well, welcome, everyone. Really, really good to have you. Israel as well. Good. I'll move on to the next since this seems to be stabilized a bit. Which domain or research community do you belong to or do you represent? For example, I, I represent the, um, let's say, humanities and uh, engineering and technology. Oh, a lot of people answering choosing the answer. If you want, and you don't mind to share with uh, other others, you can specify what you mean under other in the chat, or even uh, unmute. Okay, so natural science, engineering, medical, are, and social science are the more um, like the higher, and then agricultural and humanities plus other. So I'm really curious to know what that's what is going And then, what type of research data management activity are you mostly involved in? I'm pretty sure that everyone uh, sometimes we all uh, are doing everything, but we mostly do some things. So if you could specify the, the, the specific action in the RDM activities that you might be focusing on, that would be great. Well, apart from data management planning, which is 
I mean, include uh, complementary to data management planning, which is uh, the obvious. Coach planning, um, data analysis, data processing, data collection, preservation access, and less for data reuse and other. Again, if you feel that you want to uh, share more about your selection on the other, feel free to do so in the chat. We have uh, the other from uh, the previous uh, uh, question. Mm -hmm. That are IT centers serving uh, multiple uh, disciplines, multidisciplinary, uh, libraries, uh, uh, open access and open uh, science department, life science, um, uh, wide support uh, for several disciplines, uh, social science uh, and art humanities, and uh, RDM uh, training and support, uh, and promoting trustworthy repository. Very, really good. Uh, yes, this is for the, I guess, for the, the, the this uh, question that we're doing now. Good, thanks everyone. And moving, oops, moving on. Uh, what is one thing that you would make, that would make writing DMPs easier for you? So if you've done it before, what is the one thing that you would definitely change? Uh, or would like to change uh, in the process, maybe in content, maybe, I don't know, in the, uh, in the operational aspects of the DMP, maybe in terms of uh, the tool, Argos, or I don't know, the tools that we never use. You have not done it before. The interpretation of the questions, template with comments, a template in my local language, templates, subject-specific guidance, direct brain to DNP interface, good practice examples of templates, so mainly templates and content like um, instructions uh, around uh, the questions and how the questions are formulated. Uh, eliminating the requirement for funding. <laughs> I like this. But does this also impose that uh, we are uh, okay by doing it besides that, anyways? Um, understanding what is required, simple, short, intuitive, have not done it before, a clear generic template, more guidelines. So, yes, basic instructions. Um, yes. Understanding the importance, examples. Okay more intuitive, uh, intuitive in the process. Yeah. Really good, thank you. And then, uh, oops, sorry, that's for later. <laughs> then I'm going to switch back to my presentation and quickly go through the landscape with you so that we see where we stand. Then I'll, we'll see some new, oops, sorry, sorry. I don't know what this happens. Uh, we'll see how Argus contributes to the landscape uh, with also some new features. And we'll all together have, uh, I mean, we'll have a demo and you will be able to see in practice how, uh, what is the DMP template for Horizon Europe and how to use it. Uh, well, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, there have been some um, reports, some, some surveys uh, that assessed particular aspects of open science during the last framework program, the Horizon 2020 program. One was done um, in, in um, it was a tender uh, run for the European Commission to understand and assess the, the the results. Um, and then the other one was actually from uh, Opener. It was the, the initiative to better understand what's needed around BMPs. So what we did, and this, this particular figure is from that 
report. You can find this. All links are here and they will be available um, on the page of the community calls page afterwards. So uh, you will, we will be able to have a look yourselves as well. And this particular figure is from there. And what it shows here is that you can find the DMPs in uh, CORDIS, in, in, the in the portal of the European Commission, uh, but the deliver the, all the DMPs are not that, it's not that clear to know how you can reuse them, if you want to reuse them. Some of them also <clears throat> are subject to copyright, <clears throat> sorry, by the authors. So th this is a great area uh, that uh, we need to understand how to uh, move forward. Uh, there are no licenses currently in DMPs. There are uh, no access rights, or at least this is not the, let's say, a best practice, or it's not something that is followed by the community. Uh, in terms of the content, this is from the same uh, report. Uh, for the DMPs, and you can see here from the interviews that uh, were provided uh, by project coordinators, for us in 2020 project coordinators, we see that they feel the need to have better uh, understanding of the technicalities around DMPs, uh, to, have, uh, clear, to have better guidance and know what the level of details to write in, into DMP should be. Um, and also what, uh, what the different um, concepts inside the DMP are about, and also where to start if you if you have zero experience, like some of you already. Um, it was the meant you haven't done that before. So where do we start? Where do you start uh, if you have zero experience? Uh, in terms of exploitation of DMPs, because some of you uh, that are in uh, disciplines and involved in projects that you might want to get all the DMPs, for example, and perform a text, text data mining and other types of uh, analysis to understand them better. Uh, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, uh, possible scenarios of what you could do. Um, currently, you, you could, of course, do that, but you could not um, identify, you could not be able to identify easily, at least, easily, the, from a single DMP, the individual information for every data set that is described. So you will be able, of course, to get an idea of all the data sets described in the DMP, but not which data set in this DMP uh, has which metadata standard, uh, which protocol, and so on. Uh, and in terms of uh, exposing the DMPs in repositories, so depositing them somewhere, um, with this this report states that um, they've seen that there are different. It's very complex uh, to let's say get, get a query, uh, a simple query, to get the DMPs because some DMPs can be found as publications, some can be found as reports, some can be found as uh, other outputs, so then they don't use the correct resource type, as we say, um, as the information systems that they are included understand or, or should uh, index them under. Um, this is for uh, domain data protocols. So the domain data protocols is um, like a template, like a DMP, but for a particular uh, community, uh, sorry, discipline, for a particular domain or discipline. That means that, and, and this is encouraged by the Science Europe, which is an, 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 an association of uh, European funders. They encourage that, for example, you take the Horizon Europe uh, template that, that is provided and you make it uh, meet the needs for fair principles, for example, of your community, of your domain. And uh, yeah, according to the policies and the, uh, and the practices and best practices followed in this community. And these are called domain data protocols. So this is something that, that is encouraged and would help um, data management inside the disciplines. 
Uh, and here we see that uh, in the same, uh, yes. So as we saw before, it's difficult to uh, distinctly identify information that is meant to be for a, for a particular data set described in a single DMP, since they are all uh, brought uh, together and they might be very broadly described uh, and not per data set or per data set collection. Uh, this makes it difficult not only to find this information, but also to see uh, which of those data set or data set collections have been reused. So data reusability is uh, a little bit more, is made a little bit more difficult to identify at least uh, how the data reusability evolves in research. Um, those of you that you've already seen uh, have had a look of the Horizon Europe template, you are already familiar with this. Uh, it's one of the guidelines and it's one of the things that you are required to do to make your data interoperable. Uh, but under uh, here, under 2.3, making data interoperable, there's also this qualified references um, um, term, let's say, which is meant, and there, here's the explanation, uh, which basically means that what you need to provide also, it's not the description, no, no, not solely the description of your data sets or software, but also the different links between other outputs. So if your data set is supporting, for example, uh, another publication or, uh, or ha has been used for another project or, or the, software be, uh, the software that you've used to analyze this data set, uh, all those different um, information should be um, provided. And of course, huge thing in the under open science practices uh, in the um, Horizon Europe guidelines, is this is data sharing uh, as soon as possible and uh, with the correct licenses. So now for Argos. Well, our motivation is um, not that simple as you see here, but, but it, it, it's simple. It's, it's just to um, just to create a space where um, DMPs are seen as outputs and as fair outputs, so they are findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable as all other outputs out there. They provide all those links between other, between other outputs, right, that we saw before, and they are also um, enhanced with validated information coming from trusted sources. Um, and we'll, we'll see uh, what that means. And as much as possible are auto-generated. Um, so you don't have to do it again. If you've, uh, for example, if you've deposited a data set somewhere and you want to describe it in your DMP, you don't have to do it again. You just click and we, do, we provide um, some sort of information already in your DMP for you. So Argus is open source, of course, it's configurable and extensible, and it's meant to help you implement your research data management policies set in the project, and also according to Horizon Europe uh, um, uh, requirements. You can find it under argos.org.au. We have a large growing uh, user base, more than 2,500 at the moment, and our main users are researchers, research projects, funders, such as communities and institutions. It's free to use, um, so you can, as some of you have done other, other already. Uh, it's also available as an EOS resource under EOS portal, EOS.org.au, uh, I think it's the portal. And Julia, correct me if I'm wrong, you can also link to that. Um, yeah. You're right. Um, and then Argos is not just a tool, it unlocks new potentials in data management. So it brings all the validated information, as I said, uh, during the motivation slide, and 
It's for all outputs, not only for data, but for software, for work, for workflows. To, it's meant to be used as you want. For all disciplines, to create your own templates. Uh, for example, if you want to go into that direction and change things in the template that we have in Horizon Europe, we can do that. We can give you the, the rights and you can definitely uh, and do that and create domain data protocols uh, as encouraged by the science here. And it connects data services and workflows to, to give validation, automation, and easy publication of DMPs, of fair DMPs, with a kit. What do we mean by fair DMPs, of course? <laughs> Uh, it's enriched uh, objects, uh, research opt and digital objects, uh, digital objects that are outputs that are discoverable through Opener Explore, which is the a large discovery portal indexing millions of uh, uh, publications, data, software, and other outputs. Uh, your DMPs then are then accessible because they have PIDs, they have BOIs, so, um, and, and ORCIDs, so they are accessible uh, following the fair principles. They are interoperable because we use a standard, uh, a particular standard that um, applies for DMPs, called the DMP common standard. They are reusable because you, your DMP at the end will have a license. You, you will assign your DMP license so others can know how to use, reuse, or not <laughs> use it. Uh, they are versioned because uh, both before their publication and after their publication through Zenodo, and they are published and preserved in Zenodo. Um, but just quickly mention that um, your DMPs. So here is the research graph. The research graph is an uh, openers. Uh, opener is the infrastructure that Argos um, that, that hosts Argos, right? And Opener has um, created this huge graph of research information and entities that are linked to each other, so that we know at this moment in time how research is and we see uh, how it evolves uh, throughout time. Um, it's also a, a helpful way to, to, to know I think, how um, yeah, about research in, in Europe. And yes, Julia? Yes, we have a question in the chapter. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Sorry if I interrupt you. Uh, it's um, that can be related also uh, with uh, this uh, uh, graph. Uh, Steffi is asking uh, um, if uh, you can explain what can be done with Argos mm -hmm. regarding uh, the workflow and uh, how to integrate uh, data service is asked by Bullet. Okay, uh, quickly for Bullet, we will have another community call for that. So Argus has two, let's say, main uh, user groups, the end users, the researchers, which are researchers, and then admins and uh, people that are hosting uh, Argus in their own premises or using Argus uh, locally. Uh, so today, this call is dedicated for researchers so that we show uh, and support the um, Horizon Europe template uh, um, writing. But another one will be about this for sure. Uh, and the first one is, can you explain what can be done with Argus regarding workflows? Can you please feel free to unmute and um, maybe, because uh, I'm not sure I understand this correctly, maybe uh, elaborate on what you exactly you want. If it's related to te techni technical uh, things like how to integrate data services, then we'll show it in, in the next uh, community call, right? Uh, is there an example of one paper of DMP for project proposal? Because the examples on Argos website are old versions. Uh, project proposals. Yes, we will update those that we have in the in the website, and we'll uh, let you know. 
but we can share with you, yes, for sure, we can uh, add in the notes that we will share with everyone some examples. Because you're right, we're moving very fast. We're moving from old version to new version, like pretty much every month. Um, Thanks for this presentation. I'm particularly interested in one of the issues you have highlighted, the problem of gathering and then displaying the info on the different data sets, often from the different partners. Can you please elaborate on that? Could Argos be used for this purpose? No, no, Argos is meant to help you plan your activities, right? And create the, the links with other outputs. It is not meant to store, any data uh, or any other uh, outputs and it's not meant to help with um, yeah with that if this is what you're asking is it but ellie will explain later also how you can link uh, the data set in uh, your uh, dmp but this is going to be later Exactly. Um, Steffi uh, has uh, clarified here in the chat um, that uh, probably uh, she was referring about uh, the workflow uh, that can be done uh, in uh, in Argos. So maybe if I am yeah, okay. Oh, okay, go go ahead. No, no, there are some uh, as I see. Because Steffi also uh, replied providing more details. I think that it would be, yes, so they want to collaborate more. I think the next part then will be um, important so that you see uh, how um, I also see uh, colleagues here. Uh, and that's really good, other colleagues. Um, yes, so that you see uh, how um, it's used in practice, right? in the demo. So quickly finish this and we'll move on to the demo. It's being mindful of the time. Um, right, I was saying that if you want to exploit the DMPs, you can do it uh, by being part of the open family, let's say Argos, Argos outputs, enter this research graph, this, this huge research graph, and they are now distinct entities that can be linked to different other outputs like projects and data. So you already have a more enhanced information about them. Um, we wanted to, so we, we hear uh, everything that's happening in the European Open Science Framework. Um, we, we hear also you as researchers that would like to find the process of writing data management uh, as a less of a burden uh, and we want to contribute to that uh, and help uh, by automating some of those uh, some processes um, in the writing uh, or the publication uh, aspects of things so to do that we have um, introduced a new functionality which searches from inside Argos you can search a data set that you have already maybe you want to use a data set that you have deposited in Zenodo currently it's also it's only in Zenodo the repository but we are uh, we will be expanding this um, to, to more repositories but if you are if you have a, 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 or your if, if, if you have deposited um, your data set on the node or someone else has the post and you want to reuse it, you can do it uh, from here. You can search the data set from here. Or you might want to do that before, um, uh, th think at the planning stage of the data management, which data sets could be shared um, more openly uh, or under particular uh, access rights on the node. And then you will be able also to, to benefit from this functionality. So it goes, um, you feel free to use it as you want. Uh, so from uh, Argos here, you can search the whole database of the nodal. You can find the data set, the software or other output that you want. 
right? Select it. Click Prefill, and then you will see that immediately your uh, template will be filled with information about the title of the data, set, so description, tags, um, the repository that hosts this data set, the uh, access rights uh, of this data set, uh, the license of this data set, and uh, all those uh, fair elements, let's say, that are also uh, required in the DMP. And a different function is uh, that automates the publication process this time uh, is uh, exposing the metadata to Zenodo, meaning pushing uh, what you have created from Argos to Zenodo and making it a fair output. We take all this information that you will have provided by using Argos, right? Finalize it, click deposit, and by clicking the deposit, you immediately, and you will see in the demo, have this record available. Uh, I'll take questions that are related to that before I'm going to the demo. And just to say that Jorka Kaletri is uh, from uh, the, the leader of the development team uh, is, is here to uh, also help in the discussion in the chat. Uh, I think that when the other talk about data sets, they are talking about the chapter you add to Argos DMPs. Yes, if DMPs are published in Zenodo, are they automatically added to the Liber DMP catalog? No, no, no. Because the Liber DMP catalog is a community run and curated by Liber. They have to um, to request, let's say, DMPs to it's a collection that they have developed and they curate and preserve. Uh, but it, it's it's a good thing, and maybe we can um, ask if we can do that as well. If we can add them there, thank you. Uh, indeed, very very good idea. Uh, indeed, dataset is a very unlucky choice of word in this case. Yes. The audio is a little disturbed. I'm so sorry about this. I think it's because your micro, it's in the cable, I think. And if you can st stabilize the cable, the sound maybe could be better. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll do it next time. Now I'm, I'm worried that I will just win everything. <laughs> I'll try to change things. Um, George says that it full refers to data set descriptions. Yes, in, in full, this is uh, what, we, what we mean by data set, this, the description of data set. Exactly, the data set is used for simplicity. Yeah. One DMP consists of several data set descriptions. Um, I think it has more sense to link to the DOI instead of the title when you profile DMP from the node. You can also do that, and also you know how. Let me see. Uh, oh, let me see so, so many things. Let me ask, answer those two and come back. Uh, for the empty DMP, we don't have, um, we're not responsible for what you're doing with Argos. So if you've chosen to have it empty, or deposit it empty, that's, uh, uh, something on your end uh, and the decision that you took at that time, as is with any other output that you produce and share with the community. Uh, do you plan to develop an FAQ based on the questions you're seeing? Yes, we do. We, we, we collect everything and yes, we'll add it in the, in the FAQ section of Argos. Is there a motor program solely dedicated to generate one page simple DMPs for project proposals? Uh, to generate one page simple DMPs for project proposal. Ah, for project proposals. So before, yes, okay, I see. Um, if you want this to happen, just let us know. And of course we'll do that. We can create a, a short version of the Horizon Europe uh, template. But saying that, I'm going to switch again. And let's have a look. But what is happening? Um, 
it's so I'll switch tabs. Not so if you click Argus at OpenNDU, this is what you see. You this is our landing page, let's say. Let's move this here. So I'm being distracted by the different um, things popping up on my time. Um, you see all the you see that our landing page um, here is when you, where you will be directed to the tool and start using the tool. Here you can find some useful information about uh, connections with Opener and EOS, the different features. If you scroll further and other related benefits and so on, are other things that are useful to know. Uh, also, how can I? Uh, let me see. Hide video panel. Didn't work. Perfect. Now I don't see the buttons. Okay, good. So here you have the about page. You can see how it works, how a get an insight of how the different workflows inside the Argos um, from start to finish, and like this. And you can also have a look of how Argos is inside the open air ecosystem and the different um, possibilities that it uh, unlocks by doing that. Uh, you can also see the FAQs, contributors. We're very thankful for our um, opener NOADs, the experts in different countries who, who have worked to provide us with different localization of the tool in the language, as you see. Find some resources, like some user guides, uh, find where to contact us. And another way to go to the tool is to log in, to click login. So I'll do that. And I'll log in, but let's say that I'm not. I have different possibilities for, uh, you see, Orchid, UDAT. Uh, Opener is not uh, here, but we have also Opener, Zenodo, and other uh, things. I'll quickly log in with my Gmail because it's easier for me at the moment to skip the passwords. And I'm in. I can go if I want to link other email accounts to my profile so that I don't have to uh, log out every time and lose NPMP that I have created. I can go to my profile settings and link the, those accounts. And the last account that I have linked is the one that has all the information, all the BMPs and data subscriptions from, uh, included from all the rest that I've used. Uh, so you can always find this information under your profile. Go to my homepage. I can find the two main buttons, start new BMP and add data set from here. Uh, I can see my main activity uh, around data set descriptions and DMPs. You see, we use color coding for that. Yellow is for data sets, green is for DMPs. You can see my personal usage of Argos. I can go on the left and check public DMPs that other people have, um, okay, have made available in Argos publicly, but I can click and see those. Uh, and their associated data sets if I want to browse and scroll through only data set descriptions. And I can go to my own dashboard and do the same, check the DMPs and continue working on them. Right. Uh, and uh, my data sets as well. Same thing. I can. St I will start my new DMP from uh, this uh, button here, start new DMP. But if I want to add a new data set or a data set collection, at any time of the project, maybe on month 10, I have a new data set or data set collection. I can quickly do that in the in the pre-existing DMP that I already have in Argos by using this, this um, wizard add data set. So quickly I'm adding this data set to this DMP. Right? And to start my DMP from scratch, I start my DMP. I can import um, a file that is compatible to the standard, the DMP standard that we're using, which is a more advanced 
let's say, um, workflow of how to create your DMPs or how to edit DMPs. So I'll skip that for now and move on to the very basic workflow, which is starting with your wizard. So starting the wizard redirects you to this page where you can add all the basic information about this DMP. You can add the title to the DMP. And because I have hidden the panel, uh, please, uh, um, Julia, let me know if there are any uh, questions or at any time. Yes, there are uh, there are several questions, but maybe the one uh, that is more related to the template right now is uh, um, it's not very clear to me when uh, one should choose to add a data set or uh, uh, to describe several data products in the same data sets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is not discussions. This is um, well, if we're talking about the Horizon Europe. The requirement is that not everything, um, when we're talking about recent data, not everything is required to be described for in the DNP, but only those research data that validate the findings from publications that you have uh, in journals and in the repositories. So this is the mandate, right? And then how you do that inside the DNP, how you describe those uh, outputs, let's say, in the DNP, uh, it's uh, actually open uh, to, for you to, uh, to, to take this, uh, this executive decision, let's say, um, if you want to describe, I'm sorry, what, I cannot see the, the question, uh, the exact spelling, um, the exact wording of, of, the, of the question. So was it how to describe basically the data set, right? If it's uh, going to be a data set or a collection? If, uh, yeah, yeah, if there are, uh, so my understanding, uh, maybe Andrea can, uh, can turn on the microphone. Uh, it's that uh, uh, sometimes when uh, you are filling the uh, DMP, uh, maybe not clear, uh, if you are just adding uh, uh, several data sets or you are describing uh, other kind of data product? Ah, it's not, sometimes it's not clear in the DMP, that, that's the question. I think so, maybe Andrea can clarify. Oh, okay. Yeah, hello. Okay. <laughs> My question is, I, I try to explain it better. If I have, if I will produce, more uh, data sets in my project, right? So different kind of data. So let's imagine, I don't know, uh, counting of animal species and then a data set of sounds of animals, for instance, okay? Those are two different data sets with different files formats. Should they, they do, mm -hmm. yeah, the question is, should they do two different data sets into the DMP to describe the two different file formats? or I should describe the whole, whole process in just one data set in the DMP? Yes, uh, it's, 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 it's your call, I'm afraid. There are no guidelines for this, but I think that um, it, just, just go with the option that would be more clear for others to understand later and not mix information about the different data sets used. You know what I mean? So just try to have clean uh, descriptions of data set or collection of data sets inside the DMP as much as possible. Okay, does, thank that, you. Does, that, does that answer your, your question? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought there were like kind of best practices to follow uh, because sometimes, I mean, for me, uh, Usually in our projects, we manage several different data sets, but they are pretty, uh, I mean, almost the, the same kind of, let's say, template. Uh, mm -hmm. So probably in that case, yeah, the, the, data set, the data set in the DAP will be just one data set to describe all the data sets that will be produced in the project. So again, there is a, yeah, for me, the data set now is a lot meanings, but 
I hope that my explanation was clear. Yes, yes, and thank you very okay. much. Thank you. And here, uh, Georgios is uh, commenting also that alternative formats should be not uh, be treated as different data sets unless they have other difference due to the format too. Uh, but for instance, if you have them in uh, CSV and uh, JSON uh, format and under the same terms, um, image uh, could be um, one data set uh, description in uh, the DMP. I don't know if it's better. Um, we had also the questions here, uh, but if you want to, uh, I, I, th I think I think I think I'll finish the, the demo because maybe some questions are related uh, quickly yeah. because they also see the time uh, and move on. Uh, so here I'm creating uh, my DMP, right? I've given the DMP a title. I provided description for this DMP, why I'm doing it, and so on. I add the researchers that are working on this DMP. Um, so I can do that by adding, for example, you're here, George. I can search my colleague, George, to add him with his ORCID ID. And I can do the same by searching, let's say, with the ORCID ID and not on that. Uh, I can also search by ORCID ID. And I find me, I can add me, <laughs> and add as many people as I want uh, that help with writing this MP. Insert others manually if I don't find them with their ORCID. Add the organization that these people uh, work for, Athena for me. Maybe uh, let's say National Technical University of Athens. And same thing if I cannot find it, answer it manually. Uh, I can select the language that this CMP is written. Here is English for me, right? Maybe it was a different language. And under contact, if I share my DMP with other authors to help me uh, in describing the data sets uh, that. I will include this DMP, then I will be able to um, hear that this will be a list of people associated with this DMP, and I could change uh, who will be the contact person for this DMP uh, upon agreement. Of course, I cannot change it uh, without uh, agreeing that with people. Uh, here, next, I can select why I'm doing this, who is the funder that I'm writing this DMP for. It's European Commission because we're talking about prize in Europe. I can find the, uh, let's say, the project. And here you see we selected the European Commission and then sorted under the grants uh, field, we see all the results that are available from projects funded by the European Commission. I can select it. Uh, if it's not there yet, because maybe it's a proposal and I'm writing this DMP for a proposal, so a grant doesn't exist yet, I can insert things manually, uh, similarly to, you know, I can do that anytime if I cannot find something. And I can, I, I, I will leave this blank, but if you have a specific activity inside uh, the DMP that you would like to address in this DMP, because maybe you have a DMP for the whole project and then you want to create a DMP for a particular activity, like an open call, which is different because it combines grants and I don't know, other stuff are happening for this activity. And you can um, uh, specify it here. You can um, write it here. You can provide a license to your DMP. And let's say that I will hit Creative Commons because I want others to be able to find my DMP, reuse it, and acknowledge me for doing that. And I can select the access right for when it goes to um, the nodal. Will I want it to be under restricted or open access? And if I want to set an embargo because this is in line with my publication, then I could do that as well.
fourth step is where I'm able to select the template that I'm going to use to describe the data sets for this DMP. Maybe I want to use um, the Horizon Europe one, right? Uh, and maybe I want to use, um, I could also use others that are uh, particular to, um, that fit the needs of a particular discipline, like archaeological uh, templates uh, and so on. So I could select as many as I want. Uh, and I can, each time I'm describing a collection of data sets or a data set, I'm able to uh, move around them. So I'm going to save it, and when I save, I'm redirected to another editor, which is about the data set. So I'm going, uh, so I'm, I've left the DMP editor where I described what my DMP is about and who will going to write it. Um, and I'm moving to the data set itself. I have this pop-up immediately, which asks me if I want to use the pre-fill or to manually add the information of the data sets that I'm describing. And if this data set or the data set collection again, um, is I can find if I can find it on the nodo, then I can prefill, hit prefill. But for the purposes of this um, demo, I'll do both. So manually gets me to a blank template where I'm able to provide the title of data sets, the descriptions, I will skip this, add tags and select the template that I want to work for this um, data set. And once I select the template, it opens and I can go and quickly go through the, check the instructions, uh, check the links provided, um, start completing the, the template uh, based on what I've done in the recent data management. Uh, let's see that I'm going to save this. I can go and see now my DMP in my dashboard. It has one data set at the moment. Now you can see all the, all this information. I can add it quickly. Add another data set. This time I know what data set uh, I, I'm reusing. This data set, or I just uploaded it and I want to use it in this DMP. So I prefill, select the template that I want. I want the Horizon Europe, the, the generic one. Search for this. Oops, sorry. That again. Select this, search is another database as I showed during the presentation. Uh, let's say that I want oops. this one. I find it, I select it, and then I have it. I can enhance what I already see here. And I can check the different um, answers that were pre-filled, right? So I can see that here, the, the PID system that asks, that, it, that, that the template asks is pre-filled, and I can provide more information like um, formulate a nice, uh, you know, uh, answer around this. I can see that the nodo has been used for this data set. I can see that this is an open data set, and I can specify if I want uh, things around this. Again, create nice narratives around this. into the license and, and other information. So in, in the same way. And I can continue now uh, with adding more information in what I already received for this particular data set or data set description. Um, quickly to show you this uh, template, you start, let me close all of them. 
So this template allows you to provide also links to other outputs from resources that we have in OpenAir from the research graph, as I mentioned. Right, you have a summary. You have uh, the section where you, you can link the output that you're describing to other outputs. You have a, a, a huge section about the fair practices, so how this data set or software is findable, accessible, durable, reusable, uh, how the cost has, uh, you know, what are the costing behind uh, the different use data management activities uh, in terms of security, what you've done to, uh, what are the mechanisms applied or the best practices applied so that uh, you comply with um, that uh, ethical aspects if this if there are ethical aspects uh, you have you can specify it here and other issues that you might want to add on this thing so you see that there is a question and there is instruct there are instructions that are either from the we get this information either from the opener guides for research data management that we have in opener.du or from this particular, uh, the specific ones are from the um, Horizon Europe guidelines. So you don't have to go back and find what, 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 is, uh, what are the instructions, we have them there for you. And first question is what kind of research output I'm describing? Since the template asks me to describe data sets, software, but other outputs as well. And let's say that I want to have this describe a data set. Uh, if it's physical, I can specify it. If it's digital data set, I can specify this as well. Um, I have to um, say if I'm reusing it or generate it from scratch. Is it a new or reused data set? Right? Let's say that I'm reusing this. Um, I can add more things on my questions to, to, to make the evaluators later understand better um, why I've chosen, for example, reuse. What is the type of the described data set? Is it sample, observation, experimental? Let's see. Different selections from open ended things that you can type whatever you want to lists that you can select. Um, and also to uh, APIs that I'm going to show now that get the information, infer the information from trusted sources. So, and we'll see one type of input here. Again, we have the basic information and uh, what, what is expected here. And let's say, uh, let, let's answer this question. Does the described output support any scientific publication? Let's say that yes, it does. So I can also link to this publication from uh, the Opener Explore, the millions of publications that are harvested and uh, searchable there. I don't know, let's, I'm, I'm going to randomly do this. Uh, the journal that this publication is um, found, right? I can also specify the repository because open access to publications means you deposit, you you publish in a report in a journal, a scientific journal, but you also have to uh, always deposit a version of this publication to a repository. So you can do that from here. I add all this information like application, title, uh, scientific uh, journal, and repository where this publication can be found. You can add more if you want. Yes. And if there is any data availability statement, you can also link to that. If there is any software, you can also do that. And this is how we create the links then with other outputs. Moving on to, am I? Yes. It's uh, already um, three and uh, seven minutes. Okay. Uh, 
I'll, do, you know. I'll move on to the, because the, the most important I wanted to show was that, the prefill and the linking to other outputs. And it works the same with other types of uh, questions. You can also upload your vocabulary if you have uh, used the vocabulary and so on. So I can save this. And I'm going to go now to another that I have created for you. And let's say that this is what I created, right? It's ready. For, uh, it's, it's ready. It has everything I want, and I'm ready to finalize it. I can finalize it from here, and I can su submit. Hit submit, and now I can deposit it. Also, once it's finalized, I'm able to also deposit it. Uh, it goes to a stable stage where editing uh, is not, as you see, is not per uh, permitted. Uh, and I can deposit. Click yes. And there I have it. I can preview, I can copy, I can at any time go into my dashboard and copy this link from here and use it whenever, wherever I want or uh, visit the website there's another website where my DMP has been uh, uploaded as a PDF and as a JSON. And that was it from me. And this is uh, what it looks like. Do you still see my screen, the export? Do you still see? Yes, we can see. Perfect. And yeah, this is how it looks. Um, but stop sir and oh wow uh, there are, uh, there's a lot of activity in this chat um yes. okay Maybe okay let's what, see what we can uh, what uh, most of the questions were uh, answered already by uh Georgios. thank you so much george and uh, uh maybe uh, with uh, uh, we can ask uh, people that have not received uh, um, an answer just to open the microphone yes please do. i know i skipped a, a, a project skipped related some... question from the yes yes when i was presented even but i, I can know. share the screen with uh, google uh, because i tried to copy and paste some of the questions so the awesome yes thank you so much um so so these are new or uh, these are all but you have, you have uh, like... are the one uh, that uh, were not answered ah, okay 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 thanks so this was answered by George, the first one. The other one from Anna, do you plan to develop? This was answered, yes. Uh, maybe if you scroll, uh, where, where can I find the API documentation? Uh, API documentation, you can find the code, yes. Let me share with you that. Just a minute. So here is the code, right? Then let me go back to what you, oh, no, you go back to, <laughs> to that. Um, okay, thanks to all. I tried to explain myself better. Let's suppose we want to create a DMP that describes five different data sets that are handled by five different project partners. How do we Sorry, pull? Andy, you already um, answered to that. Thank so, you. Okay, okay, okay. Just thanks. Not to make you lose you know, more time. Thank you. That was very clear. Thank you all for being here uh, after uh, me rambling for, for a couple of minutes already. Um, you can upload more than a file by each DMP. I think that most of the questions. I think I, I said this. Yes, yes. Can, can anyone? But yes, because this is this won't um, go anywhere. If you, if, if you please, but uh, your question was not answered. Can you please uh, unmute or or point to that question? However, you feel more comfortable. Or maybe. George, do you want to answer by microphone? <laughs> because maybe it will help. 
And I think they, he's answered the question. Yes. Well, In any if case, I can, oh, yes, sorry. please, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Andrea here. I have another question. Uh, once you upload the, the final version on Zenodo, how you can then update it is from Zenodo or from Argos? From Argos, uh, you can uh, you, you can if you want to continue to work on the same DMP, you have to create a new version inside Argos, which will be then pushed as a new version to the already published uh, DOI uh, DMP in, in Zenodo. But okay, thanks. This is the think the workflow if it's published you have to create a new version if you want to continue editing this it's not a you won't be able to undo anything and go back to the editing mode unless you create a new version uh anyone else no in any case we'll collect all those uh questions and try to categorize them and add them in our FAQ and also we'll add them all with, with their answers uh, to our uh, community calls dedicated page and maybe we can provide the link now uh, let me see Julia if you have it uh, handy that could work so this is where you will find everything after this oops after this call and please feel free to continue this discussion uh, by email if you have more questions if you feel that you need more support uh, don't hesitate this uh, of course we will be um, meeting from now on every month with the exceptions of the summer so next time that we will meet is uh, july and september uh, so with the exception of august but uh, that doesn't mean that we cannot communicate uh, by other means. And if you have uh, ideas of better ways to communicate uh, all together, besides the community calls, let us know and we're happy to uh, implement them. Um, I think I'll leave it here. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, see you and talk to you soon and don't hesitate to, to contact us for anything and thank you so much this was my first uh, argos community call also i was really excited <laughs> yes thanks all to be here and uh, and uh, if you have other questions again uh, there is uh, there is uh, the link uh, and uh, the email address you can also contact via um twitter or whatever you want and uh, we hope that uh, we will hear a little bit more from you and uh, know you better because this is a community and we want to improve uh, the service from uh, also your needs and uh, what you are uh, uh, thinking and what are the difficulties that uh, you may have or we thanks. may have <laughs> thanks <laughs> also to too. you julia thanks to you university of minio and george for being here and supporting this thank you